Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. The Earth is quite a resilient system within limits. Okay, so you can stress the system one way and it's fine. You can stress the system other ways, another way, and it um, basically jumps into a different state. Okay, and the sensitivity of the Earth to these different perturbations is, um, it varies quite a bit depending on the um, sort of stability that you, region that it's in. Sometimes it's just a small nudge to knock it out into a different state, and other times, you know, it's, it's actually, you can push it quite hard, and it's quite resilient. And we've been lucky since the end of the last ice age, about 10,000, 11,000 years ago. The Earth uh, climate has been very stable. It's allowed us to flourish as a civilization. It's allowed people to basically go from being hunters and gatherers in small bands to building large cities and having hierarchical structures and organization and democracy and things like that. But the system is by all parameters that we look at now, it's it's stretched to the limits and you know it's very close to a breaking point. So if you're wondering what my um, sweatshirt says, geograph geography a geographer is not a career. Okay, and uh, what you're missing here, and some of you may know this, is it's a post apocalyptic survival skill. So there you go. So in the previous few videos I've talked about the Arctic and the Arctic is a an Achilles heel of the system it's a linchpin it's a cornerstone and it's undergoing massive changes right now in just about every parameter those changes are accelerating fast and they're highly nonlinear and it is a system that is the most liable to tip the entire earth into a much more unstable regime and it's arguable that we're well on the way to that not saying it's not reversible but I cutting fossil fuels is not sufficient we need to actively remove co2 from the atmosphere and actively cool the arctic to ensure that it doesn't tip over into a completely disruptive state um, our weather patterns are going haywire right now because the jet streams are so fractured and distorted that uh, things are, we're, we're, we're entering a completely different world at a very rapid rate. So I'm going to continue with my discussions on the Arctic. I'm going to talk about the Arctic snow cover. I'm going to talk about Greenland more. I'm going to talk about the, um, the sea ice and sea surface temperatures and things like that basically reporting on different sections from a recent report, the Arctic uh, Report Card 2018. Now, you can access this site going to NOAA government sites because those sites are all shut down. They've been shut down for a week and a half or so. Uh, hopefully they're restored soon, but there are um, some mirror sites um, which I'll, I'll talk about well, I, I, I basically pointed them out in the previous videos. Okay, so let's get right into things here. Okay, so this is my website, my blog. My last posting, the last posting was December 29th. Arctic summer temperatures set to skyrocket like bat out of hell. The point is, is that most of the warming right now in the Arctic is in the winter the autumn and the spring, not so much in the summer because there's still e sea ice. And all of the heat in the Arctic in the summer is going into melting that sea ice, but the temperature stays close to the freezing point. So the sea ice acts as a refrigerator, if you like, for the whole Arctic. And as soon as we have this blue ocean event, which I fully expect in the next four or five years, then the Arctic temperatures in the summer will skyrocket then Greenland's isolated on its own up there is the only cold spot. So the center of cold shifts from near the North Pole to centered over Greenland. The jet streams will become 
much more offset than they are now, and that will threaten global food supplies. So this is all coming very, very soon, fast and furious. Um, just want to point out that I'm getting close to 3 million video views in YouTube, over 14,000 subscribers, 415,000 site views. That's in this uh, paulbeckwith.net site. 186,000 unique visitors. And I'd like to give a big shout out to David Korn, DK, David Korn, um, who um, does the postings and uh, also, you know, we talk a lot about strategy and things like that, you know, different things I should, I can post on, etc. So I'd like to really thank David um, for that. And uh, this is my Twitter feed. If you're not following me at Paul H. Beckwith, please do so. When I was doing some volunteer work at the Sierra Club in about 2009, I was interviewed, I think it was CTV television or Global News in Ottawa, and we were talking about the Arctic, and I came up with this saying at that time, what happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic. It's not like Las Vegas. And it's interesting because this quote has become a mainstream quote but completely unattributed to me. <laughs> it's funny because when I caught, when I thought of it at the time, I thought of putting a trademark on it and uh, <laughs> collecting royalties anytime anybody, you know, said that quote. But uh, anyway, I didn't do that. I, but I, I can prove that, that uh, I was the first one to actually say that quote. Okay, so this is, uh, this is, so I'm very active on Twitter, post all kinds of stuff on climate and renewable energy and neat stuff. Here's an airplane landing and you can see the vortices. Um, this is what extinction sounds like. So it's measuring the sounds in nature and suddenly boom, goes silent, pretty silent in some regions. I mean, this is horrifying stuff. You just have to stop and listen. Okay, so let's get right into the um, Arctic report card. So page 13 of the Arctic report card, terrestrial snow cover. Okay, so let's talk about that. And this is mostly comparing what's happening in 2018 to what's happening in the previous year. Now the trend of, this is the trend of snow cover. Okay, so this is the April snow cover extent anomaly. And this is in millions of square kilometers. And what you can see, it's from around 1970, slightly before 1970, to present day. And the North America Arctic trend is this, so slightly decreasing. And the Eurasian, there's a lot more variability in the Eurasian snow cover, but it's also the trend is slightly downwards. But not so much. This is April. This is in May now, and you can see that the, the variability is increasing in North America. And then in June, the variability is increasing even more, but there's a definite increased trend downwards in the snow cover extent. And in the Eurasian Arctic, it's more variable here than in North America. The variability continues to increase and the trend downward increases. And that, that's also true. So that's true in May. It's also true in June. Okay, so we're seeing a, a, a large trend downwards in snow cover. And what this means is when, because there's less snow cover, the Arctic is a lot darker. Because the Arctic's a lot darker, it absorbs a lot more solar energy in the summers, it warms up. So this is a big factor for uh, Arctic temperature amplification. And the snow cover is not talked about so much. Everybody talks about the sea ice decline, but the snow cover in the spring is actually declining at almost double the rate per decade than the sea ice is. Sea ice is dropping about 12 to 13 percent, almost 13 percent per decade. Um, and that's in the, the minimum, that's in September, at the end of the um, melt season, whereas the snow cover in spring is declining at almost 22, 23 percent per, per decade. So the Arctic is significantly darker in the spring, so in the summer it absorbs a lot more solar energy, warms up, and we get this Arctic temperature amplification. This is what's happened in, in uh, this is anomalies of snow cover duration. So how long is the snow covering the ground? 
And this is in 2018 versus the 1998 to 2010 mean. Now the problem is, is there's a, you know climate change has been severe from 2000 onwards from this over this time period. So this mean is not the best mean to take. If you Google Rutgers uh, snow cover Arctic, you know you can get the real time data and you can get all the trends there from 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 that site. Now in 2018, so this is the um, this is the snow onset, August to January, okay, um, in 2018 versus this mean. And what it's showing is that, you know, we got snow earlier. So the, it's, it got on the ground earlier and it left later. Okay, the yellow, this is the um, Febu snow melt February to July. It's a negative anomaly. It left later, so the snow dur the snow cover duration was actually larger in 2018 versus 2017. Like I said, there is variation from year to year, but the trend um, is is uh, downwards to a much darker Arctic. This is a snow depth anomaly, okay, for 2018 relative to the 1999 to 2017 average. Okay, so again, these averages. These baselines are not very well chosen, in my opinion. This is for March, April, May, and June. And what you can see is this in 2018, the snow, it snowed earlier. It left the ground later, and the depth was larger. So this is bucking the trend. Um, but again, it's the average is, is not uh, chosen that well, but the snow is a bit deeper. Okay, there is variation from year to year. This is the trend. This is in April. This is snow water equivalent. So generally the snow water equivalent normally it's something like a 10 to 1 ratio. Okay, if you have an inch of snow, if you have an inch of rain rather, and then it's, it's too cold for the rain, an inch of precipitation, uh, that would be 10 inches of snow. So you melt the snow, you get an inch of water. Okay, so that's typically what happens, and this is the anomaly of the snow water equivalent. Um, again, the black is North America, and the red is Eurasia, and what you see is a downward trend here. So there's less snow falling generally, um, and the trend was bucked here. Okay, in 2018, lots of snow. This just, but this just means it, there is variability, and also as the temperature rises in the Arctic, you can actually get the air can hold a lot more water vapor. And if the temperature is just slightly below zero, then you can get the snow. Um, you can get more snow happening. We're seeing also things happening, you know, snowfall events on the east coast of, the, of, of North America. Now, I'll talk next about the Greenland ice sheet. Okay, so this is a, if you, if you go to Arctic sea ice graphs and look at the data there, this, is, this data is p depicted there. Um, so this is showing, this is a 1981 to 2010 medium, the blue line. And this is the 2018 melt percentage over Greenland. So there's quite a bit of variability. It peaked as high as about 45% here. There was one year recently when it was about 97%. It was huge. I mean, Green the whole of Greenland was much warmer than normal, and the, the melt extent, the parts of the Greenland the, of the surface, 97% of the entire surface was melting. This is for 2018, and this shows the anomaly relative to the 1981 to 2010 period. So there was more. Um, so the albedo, if you like, or the melt extent here, Okay, so the anomaly was positive here. So there was more melting going on here. These are at lower elevations. Um, there was less melting going on in the blue areas. But it tells you, I mean, we can get very good satellite data to get year-to-year -year variation. Um, so this is the ablation anomalies um, at different stations. Okay, so there was, because it was a bit, because the, there was less snow melt, and uh, we, we had uh, more snowfall, et cetera, Greenland, so the albedo was higher, then the uh, ablation was slightly less in, in these particular 